I make leaders. That's what I do. I guess you could kind of say that that's my superpower. When I'm done here, I hope that you will all leave with the recognition that you have that power too. For all of my adult life, I have been actively involved, in one way or another, in training and developing people to lead others. I suppose that that makes me a leader, but never once in my life has somebody asked me what I do and received, I make leaders, as an answer. That would sound weird. It's not my job title. It's not my job description. But deep down, that is the heart and the nature of what I do. When I was in college at Florida State University in the late 80s, I joined a fraternity. From the moment that I joined, I kept having these leadership positions thrust upon me. I had thought that I was inept. Maybe nobody else wanted these jobs. But it never actually occurred to me that I might possess what we would refer to as leadership qualities. I just joined to have some fun, maybe meet some girls. So I stumbled my way awkwardly through those days, avoiding like the plague the loftiest positions and the great responsibilities that came with them, seeking instead positions with a narrower focus, things like sergeant at arms, treasurer, the completely pointless vice president. With the thought that I could probably do a lot less damage there and that nobody was ever really going to follow my lead anyway. Nevertheless, throughout my time in college, I kept moving up the chain of leadership in that organization. I majored in hotel and restaurant management, where I learned all kinds of theories about how to run a business and how to manage people. And then I went to work in that field, putting my education to use, gaining additional knowledge and experience along the way, earning raises and promotions based upon my performance. I had a modest level of both successes and failures in my time in hospitality. I've been fired from some jobs. I've also been a general manager and a food and beverage director, a director of operations, and a managing partner. Titles that I worked hard to earn and maintain, and even then, I don't think that I would have referred to myself as a leader. I even participated in the occasional workshop or seminar to bolster my knowledge and my skills and my experience and I joined local trades groups to network with industry professionals, all with the goal of trying to get incrementally better at my work. It was a lot of fun and a lot of work, and most importantly, it's a line of work where it's imperative to constantly be training and developing people, constantly, all the time. People come and go, people move up and on, and there was always a need for somebody to be ready to step in and take someone else's place at a moment's notice. Trainings were always being devised and implemented, modified and updated as things changed over time. It was also a line of work that does not lend itself well to what we call work-life balance. So at the age of 34, starting my 20th year in the business, I realized that as much as I loved it, I didn't think that I could do it for another 20 years. It was time to start looking for something else. I had no idea where to begin. I kind of thought that I would probably end up in something tertiary to restaurant management, something food adjacent, like maybe working in sales for a restaurant supplier or a wine distributor or something like that. I even started asking people, hey, if I didn't do this, what could you see me doing? Over and over, people kept telling me they thought I should be a teacher. I just couldn't quite see it yet. My father had been a teacher. He also kept pushing me to pursue that as an option. But it wasn't something that I had ever seriously considered until a business partner said something that really hit me profoundly. He said he thought the world would be a better place with me as a teacher than it would with me running restaurants. In the moment, I thought that was supposed to be a backhanded compliment. But after discussion and reflection, I realized otherwise. It was one of those moments that really makes one examine one's life and perspective. So after some pondering, I jumped at the opportunity for change, I sold my share of the business, and I moved from Virginia back to Florida and enrolled at St. Petersburg College to get a bachelor's in business technology where I learned how to teach. This was a much more natural transition than I had ever anticipated. It turns out that managing and training and developing people are pretty similar to teaching and educating and instructing people. Who knew? 
So for the past 15 years, I've been a career educator, teaching to high school students practical skills that through my education, experience, and training I know are vital for their future opportunities for success. Today I teach classes in information technology, accounting, business law, entrepreneurship, and coming full circle, hospitality and tourism management. But that's all content. The context of it all is teaching life skills and success skills and training students to become leaders beginning with their ability to lead themselves. Now this presentation is supposed to be about career success, so I should probably get around to talking about that. It turns out that success is really not a great mystery. In fact, success is pretty easy. It's surprising that more people aren't successful, or at least aren't aware of or don't recognize their success. Let's begin by defining some terms so that we're all on the same page and have a consistent frame of reference. So to me, leadership, in the simplest terms, is creating opportunities. More specifically, leadership is the process or act of creating opportunities for oneself and others to achieve expanded results. It's not an art, but a skill that can be developed. Success is a little bit harder to define because it can be very subjective, it means different things to people. Making money, doing fulfilling work, advancing in one's field, attaining power and influence, having friends, family, that list could go on and on. So let's stick with career success. The traditional definition of career success, as defined on iResearch.net, is the positive material and psychological outcomes resulting from one's work-related activities and experiences, and defined by Forbes as a combination of achieving a reasonable level of financial stability while doing work you enjoy, and then finding that you are also happy and fulfilled with your life and career choices as well. Now, neither of those are perfect, but united together, they form a really good working model for career success. I make good money, enough to cover all of my needs and many of my wants. I really enjoy what I do, especially the results of what I do. I believe that I'm well respected in my field, and I find myself to be pretty fulfilled most of the time. So I guess one could argue by these definitions that I am successful. For a long time, I never really stopped to take all of what I do and put it together into a simple, cohesive, united concept. But sometime during the pandemic, the wheels started turning, and this is what I've concluded. There are, I believe, three pillars of career success. Theoretical, practical, and personal. The theoretical pillar deals with education. Usually that received in a classroom setting, beginning with basic core knowledge, and as one advances towards a specialty, shifting from breadth of knowledge to depth of knowledge in a particular area, such that one could eventually become known as an expert in a particular field by attaining enough knowledge in it. The theoretical pillar can be summed up as traditional schooling. The practical pillar deals with experience gained in a particular area through hands-on work. Usually that work which utilizes one's theoretical knowledge in that same area. This is the area in which I believe through putting in that magical 10,000 hours towards mastery, one develops what we would call wisdom. The practical pillar or the school of hard knocks can be summed up as wisdom comes from good judgment, good judgment comes from experience, experience comes from bad judgment, meaning that we learn best from our mistakes. I should point out at this time, I've learned a lot in my life. The third pillar is personal development. This is all the other stuff that we do in our lives to continually build upon our workplace skills. This could be continuing education that we may take to maintain our professional license or certification. This could be networking activities within our profession, or service activities within our communities. This is any activity that helps us develop our leadership skills, our communication skills, our interpersonal skills. Sometimes these activities are required of us, sometimes we choose them. The personal development pillar can be summed up as soft skills. Theoretical, practical, personal. Any one of these pillars, or even two, is not enough to allow one to become successful by our established definitions. 
It is only through uniting and balancing all three pillars that one can truly achieve career success. Allow me to give you some examples to illustrate. Oh, actually I already gave you those examples as I was telling you my story. Let's look back. I received formal education first in business management from Florida State University and later in business education from St. Petersburg College. That's one, theoretical. I put my education to use first in a successful career running restaurants and later in a successful career as a teacher. That's two, practical. I routinely participate in activities to maintain my teaching credentials as well as to continually improve my own skills, like standing up here in front of you tonight. That's three, personal. Theoretical, practical, personal. Now I mentioned my superpower earlier, making leaders. One of the most enjoyable parts of my job here at Palm Harbor University High School is that I also serve as the chapter advisor for Future Business Leaders of America, or FBLA. I'm also a district director for FBLA for Pinellas County, and I serve on the state board of directors for FBLA. Well, there it is, right there in the name. Future Leaders. So by nature of my participation in these roles, I must actively be doing something to influence people's leadership abilities. Again, it took me a long time to figure it out, but it goes right back to those definitions. I'm not specifically teaching leadership. I'm creating opportunities for others to achieve expanded results. I give them some knowledge about leadership. I give them an opportunity to put that knowledge to use to accomplish some goal or fulfill a need. And then I coach them through the successes or failures of that experience and I help them develop the skills needed to move forward. Can you visualize the three pillars there? I give them some knowledge about leadership, theoretical. I give them an opportunity to put that knowledge to use to accomplish a goal or fulfill a need, practical. And then I coach them through the successes or failures of that experience and I help them develop the skills needed to move forward personal, theoretical, practical, personal. I let them know that they're successful, they'll do the work to build upon those pillars. I believe that when I started, I said that you would leave here with the knowledge that like me, you have the power to make leaders. Let's see if I was successful. We'll begin with those three pillars. Can we turn the house lights up just a drop, please? Oh, excellent. If you would indulge me for a moment, please raise your hand if you've ever received any kind of formal education. I imagine that's probably everybody here. Excellent, that's one, theoretical. Next, raise your hand if you've ever had the opportunity to put any of that theoretical knowledge to use in some constructive way. Excellent, that's two, practical. Raise your hand if you ever participate in any kind of activities to help develop your interpersonal skills or build your knowledge, like maybe attending a TEDx event. That's three, personal. All of you can now consider yourselves successful. See, I told you it wasn't that hard. But now let's put your superpowers to the test. Raise your hand if being here tonight has created opportunities for yourself or others to achieve expanded results. Well, there you go. You make leaders too. Enjoy your superpowers. Use them wisely. Thank you.